good evening to all hope you are all are doing well before start my talk i wish to express my sincere gratitude to the management of arpakam college of engineering especially it's my duty to thank uh, dr s monogran who is the dean of science and humanities and dr k ramakrishnan head of physics department so today i have planned to discuss some of the methods and tools which i'm using over a decade to assist my research writing i have split the presentation into four parts in the first part we will see some basics of preparing manuscripts like the ethics or something like author contribution in the second part uh, we will see what are the key points should take care of when formatting or uh, devising a manuscript of course a uh, language is a very crucial part and i will discuss few language related things that we should take care when preparing manuscript in the third part finally we will see some uh, useful tools which can be used to assist uh, improve our research writing skills okay Let's start with some basic aspects of research writing and publishing. Very fundamental and very important aspect in a research writing is its ethical concerns. You might have seen the quote "Stand on the shoulders of giants" in the homepage of Google Scholar. It's a metaphor used by Newton about the significance of values work on his research. What it actually means is scientific discoveries building off of previous discoveries. It's like a building a cast of cords. Uh, even over, uh, even one cord fails, the entire system may collapse. So fabrication and falsification is a very crucial uh, offense and unethical in any kind of research work. Further, science is or uh, research is about the better future. It is meaningless to provide a society with partly or hidden work. It won't help any of us. So always, a scientific publication should be complete and should support the advancement of science. One crucial question is that you devised an experiment and have collected significant data. Now the question is when and what to publish from the acquired data. Don't trust to publish or don't lamp to publish. Just go through go through the literature and confirm yourself that enough work have been done. Make yourself sure the obtained results or give better understanding. on known issues or even it may be indicated the existence of new phenomena sometimes not intentionally but a description may lack of enough evidence or uh, don't have adequate material to address the problem of issue so try to avoid the preparation of short and incomplete manuscripts of course uh, uh, everyone wishes to uh, publish their work but you should believe it would take time if a manuscript is rejected few times or got some critical reviews it doesn't mean that the work is not qualitative enough try to address the issue and should ready to improve at any point we all should remember this it is easy to publish a fabricated data but there's always a possibility that it can be identified in near future uh, such a defect would uh, severely affect not only your research but our entire career also time now for research is uh, very important depending upon the quality of the publication over time one's reputation will be determined of course a sum of publication is about quality as well as quantity we need significant number of publications but lot number of a uh, low quality publication will give you arise uh, some negative image one more thing is people used to publish as chunks or with slight modification if you go through literature you can see similar work from same author has been published in different journals or simultaneously but now uh, but now days uh, uh, these are considered as a very serious uh, even in uh, last week uh, eight paper sub Uh, have been detracted from journal of material science uh, springer own journal uh, due to this duplication so be careful about this too in fact uh, there is a website called uh, retract watch which provide uh, news about uh, retraction of scientific publication due to several issues uh, that's the one way to know uh, what we should do then there will be a question always arise uh, who can get authorship if there is any uh, insured and parents they already should be aware of this issue literally anyone who contributed intellectually deserve an authorship i have a one rule like if something can be programmed this not for the authorship so routine works like assisting material synthesis and running a code on in a foreign authorship uh, at least as uh, what i think uh, and sh- uh, surely extending the such facility cannot can be a contribution i know this is heavily practiced by uh, in indian context as we lack of enough research facilities but still you should know uh, it is unethical so someone uh, who did major work uh, like from synthesis to characterization uh, as always are uh, designated as the first author usually the guide or coordinator who suggests or directs a research problem will designate as the corresponding author 
but uh, in recent days uh, journals ask the exact role of listed authors since uh, nowadays the science is more and more uh, interdisciplinary and collaborative most of the times they will want put forth their best so seconding them might hinder their contribution so by explicitly declaring the roles of everyone uh, will treat them fairly the roles can be categorized from conceptualization to uh, uh, conceptualization to validation and even to the level of project administration uh, which have been shown uh, at the bottom one more but a very important issue uh, in scientific research is plagiarism if a previously published text is cloned or simply copied or even if it is remixed uh, it falls under plagiarism we may have a plagiarism check is the default procedure in scientific publishing uh, even before it reaches the editorial office even is in your own words uh, from your previously published text is unethical and it is designated as self plagiarism nowadays you just made it mandatory to check plagiarism even if this is at master's levels so plagiarize the text on be a better idea for a qualitative publication now we'll see about the general formatting guidelines for a research text scientific publication can be broadly classified into either as a book or as journals uh, most of the rules which we are about to discuss is same for the both the fields uh, so let's first start with the case of books research books can be uh, further classified into three major classes proceedings or the books based on uh, meetings or conferences monographs are often discussed a single topic elaborately for example often uh, this can be published as monograph the handbook is often a multi authored and discuss the field in depth the journal articles can be classified into four types articles are the usual way to communicate a research work even though it is expected to be short and precise there, there is no page limit for them note covers mostly single significant aspect in a research work and third one is communication or letters which are preliminary reports of uh, special significance and urgency usually notes and communications are subject to length restriction finally review article summarize uh, research achieve, achievement over time in particular field considering the general structure uh, the general structure of any research article uh, it should have a problem to address uh, the researcher should hypothesize a problem uh, possible solution and most often an experiment or a theoretical analysis is carried out to test the hypothesis and based on the collected data conclusion uh, will be derived as we are going to see this part in detail uh, in the following slides let's see few important aspects in a manuscript it should have a concise title about the length of two lines and it should reflect the papers and then to emphasize the research work and remember even though uh, we are about to discuss the general structure every journal have their own formatting guidelines so after a fair draft it is a better idea to format the manuscript according to journal guidelines so, but formatting manuscript each and every time of submission is a pain and uh, time consuming task understanding this now most of the journals accept uh, free form manuscript with a uh, certain clear formatting you can even submit the file as pdf and don't need to submit any production related materials once your paper has been accepted then you have to format it according to the journal format and have to submit that this uh, figure shows the major part of any uh, research uh, publication content of major content of any research uh, publication it should have a abstract that should briefly state the purpose of the research its methodology and summary of uh, key findings then there is the introduction part uh, that should discuss the previous attempts uh, and what is unsolved and scope of the current research work and uh, even its limitation in the methods and materials uh, in methods or uh, materials and methods part uh, brief and essential discussion about the procedures used uh, background data equation should be discussed uh, the data obtained from the previously described method should be summarized uh, in results part and the corresponding discussion and interpretation should be given here Finally, in the conclusion section, the results and the context of original problem should be presented. Uh, apart from those major sections, the manuscript should have the following sections. In reference section, proper attribution of research work published early should be provided. In reference, in there were two aspects. One is to cite the recent work, which themselves uh, give an impression that the uh, original work or uh, important work. in this way the problem uh, look very recent mostly journals uh, recommend this uh, because citing a 50 or 100 year old publication won't contribute their impact factor 
but many scientists are against this proposal. I would suggest cite what you actually referred and in case, uh, and in case uh, if you are requested to cite a recent material, uh, you may adopt that one. People who have assisted our uh, research work like person who read our manuscript and uh, offered their perspective or a friend who might have supplied you some chemicals uh, when you are in need uh, should be acknowledged in the acknowledgement section. Although uh, it is not possible to present each and every data that we obtained in the results and discussion section, that might not be important in the view of a present discussion or uh, the content of the manuscript, but might have a significant value for a system researcher. So the rule of thumb is, uh, since uh, most of the work is done based on uh, uh, common people's money, these scientists should be responsible for that. Only if research work is completely disclosed, uh, uh, it would be useful for the future and advancement of the field. Let's move on to the language part. Here I assume that uh, we are all uh, going to use English as the uh, communication language. Even if you are writing in other languages, the scientific descriptions uh, could be the same. Um, so in a manuscript, uh, always uh, use short and declarative sentences. Your statements uh, should look like a fact rather than a poetry, which may arise a lot of questions uh, or may be uh, complicated. Certainly it should be uh, straightforward and should be easy to read. Uh, use a low power box instead of a bibliophilia. Uh, no, uh, I doesn't mean uh, you have to translate each and every scientific word, but uh, try to be as much uh, separate as possible. Scientists do not need to be an expert in language or in grammar, but it is important that our sentence should not confuse others, uh, especially the readers. Uh, it's good to publish a paper on encryption, uh, but it shouldn't be your paper itself should, uh, like an encrypted thing. Considering tenses and voices, uh, use active voice uh, uh, when it is learned uh, less body. Use passive uh, voice like the two year is not important, uh, something like uh, samples were handled at 200 degrees Celsius, uh, like that. For describe what was done, use simple past, and to describe facts, use present tense. Most of the paper written in the combination of uh, simple present and simple past tense. Both are fine to discuss research and conclusion part. Finally, use a first person when it helps to keep you meaning and express a purpose or decision. The key to a uh, right sentence is uh, uh, it's like uh, doing a math problem. There is no space for uh, jargon and expressive, uh, excessive words. Uh, of course, the uh, reverse is also true, but always try to be brief. Uh, omit empty faces uh, versus uh, omit words. Uh, importantly, don't give too much exaggeration to the work. Uh, uh, nowadays, uh, uh, even journals are advising researchers to avoid the word novel in their manuscript. For example, if the people are synthesizing around 100 new materials in a year and everyone may claim uh, that their material is novel, the word itself uh, losing its meaning. Uh, finally, uh, not only in your life, uh, in your manuscript too, you should be economical, spend for necessary things, but always save for the future. An important aspect in language is usage. Uh, uh, it is uh, important to use general uh, neutral language. Like any fields in science also, women are restricted to uh, enter in the early days. So uh, most of the earlier texts contain words that directly indicate men. With the advancement of societies and the culture, women are no longer any far below and their contribution are uh, not any lesser. So it is advised to use a general neutral language in our research text, uh, uh, like instead of man, uh, use people, instead of manpower, uh, uh, using uh, uh, employees, uh, uh, instead of wife, use family or spouse, uh, wherever, whatever be necessary, uh, use the appropriate word in the general, uh, gender neutral uh, language. Do not, uh, 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 considering spacing, do not use square brackets, parentheses or braces around the symbol. For a quantity to make uh, represent uh, any other quantity, uh, use italic uh, type for uh, subscripts and superscripts uh, uh, that are themselves symbols for uh, physical quantities or numbers. Use Roman type for uh, subscripts and superscripts that are the abbreviations and symbols. Exponent should follow subscripts and use a slash uh, in all subscript and uh, superscriptions with uh, no spaces on uh, either side. Leave no space around the operation in subscripts and superscripts. Leave no space around uh, uh, expressions in subscripts and superscripts unless uh, confusion or uh, uh, misreading would uh, result. 
in the case of units use metric and si units in all possible technical documents abbreviate units of measure when they accompany numbers leave a space between a number and its unit of measure do not use a period of an abbreviated unit of measure exception is uh, in the case of inches uh, where you should put a period of the add uh, in do not define units of measure do not leave a space between number and the person angular degree angular minute or angular second symbols use degree celsius with the space of the number but no space between uh, no space between degree symbol and capital c do not add an s to make the plural of any abbreviated units of measure the abbreviations are used as both singular and plural considering mathematical concepts so define all symbols for first time when you use them in text do not define standard mathematical constants such as uh, pi or i or even e do not use an uh, equal sign as an abbreviation for the word e or uh, the word equals in the narrative text uh, like this one uh, that p is a pressure and it should be like a p equal to pressure do not use a plus sign as an abbreviation for the word and uh, in uh, in narrative text like uh, uh, it should be a and b not like uh, a plus b do not use an asterisk to indicate multiplication except uh, in uh, only in computer it should be expressed only in computer related expressions so so few other mathematical concepts are uh, uh, you should use italic type of uh, uh, italic uh, font for variables axes planes uh, vectors tensors uh, uh, elements of determinants and matrices constants uh, and for variables uh, and you should uh, you should use bold face type for uh, vectors tensors uh, matrices and uh, some uh, uh, most of the multiple multi dimensional physical quantities uh. for uh, uh, chemical names uh, uh, greek locants with uh, no space uh, after comma have to be used uh, you have to use hyphens to separate locants and uh, configurational descriptors do not use hyphens to separate the syllables of a uh, chemical name unless the name uh, is too long to fit on one line uh, when uh, define, uh, when you are uh, mentioning the polymers uh, you should know poly is a syllabic word prefix uh, and not a descriptor and no special treatment like italicizing or something like that uh, uh, shouldn't be need for that one when you citing uh, references uh, uh, often in manuscript uh, three common citing methods have been employed uh, by using uh, subscript numbers and by italic numbers uh, subscript numbers are often uh, are given as the end of the sentence and italic numbers are also uh, something like uh, given at the end of the sentence but uh, often they are in the uh, point size similar to the top sentence only uh, they have been italicized uh, inside of uh, parentheses uh, uh sometimes uh, author name and year of publication in parentheses uh, uh, have also been used as a citing method uh, most often uh, uh, in books uh, this kind of citing uh, uh, have been used so when you uh, cite references uh, uh, if a reference have only two authors give both names uh, joined by the word and if a reference has more than two authors give only the first name listed followed by uh, et al do not use a comma before uh, et al always use a pre period after al uh, to cite more than one reference by the same principal author and various co-authors uh, use the principal author's name followed by and co-workers uh, and uh, colleague or uh, and colleagues uh, and when citing more than one reference at one place uh, uh, by number is uh, one of the numerical systems uh, list the numbers in ascending order and separate them with commas uh, when come presenting data there would always be a confusion like whether i should present this graph or table the thumb of rule is if you want to convey the points at, at a glance or want to show the trends of relationship between different parameters graph is preferable for example if you record a uv absorption spectrum which has characteristic absorption peak or uh, peaks it is better to mention it in the uh, text itself on the other hand if you want to show the variation in absorption spectrum with respect to different environments uh, it's better to use a graph 
uh, consider a gra uh, graph when you want to disclose the exact numbers. So, for example, instead of showing an A from image, it is better to list uh, different physical parameters obtained from the studies uh, like roughness, uh, skewness, uh, etc. So, uh, uh, when you uh, decided to uh, use table, uh, be sure uh, uh, that particular data can be presented as a narrative and it has precise num uh, you want to present it as a precise numbers uh, um, it is uh, <coughs> for example um, variation in mobility with respect to different temperature um, such a relation should be uh, can be defined uh, uh, with tables uh, uh, this should uh, you remember it should be supplement uh, not uh, duplicate uh, text and figures uh, uh, and when you cite the table, capitalize the word table when it is followed by the table number. Number tables subsequently with the uh, Arabic or uh, rim, uh, Roman numerals. Uh, discuss table sequentially. So the table 1 is discussed before table 2. Um, a formal table should consist of at least 3 interrelated columns and 3 rows. If you have only 2 columns, try writing that material as a narrative. If the columns do not uh, relate to each other, use a list of items. Um, and if it has uh, some unusual requirements, perhaps it should uh, really be a figure. The table should be simple and concise. Arrange all data for optimal use of space. If you have many small tables, consider combining them uh, and uh, be consistent with symbols and abbreviations among tables uh, uh, and between tables and text. Each table should have concise title and appropriate uh, column headings. Let's see figures. Uh, if you want to use figures uh, uh, when you uh, intend to give the data uh, to be highlighted, clarified and uh, to summarize the results, uh, figures can be graphs of data, uh, photographs, sketches, flowcharts, etc. Line graphs should show trends, bar graphs compare magnitudes, pie charts show relative portions of a whole. Photographs can provide absolute proof of findings. Excessive number of figures can dilute the value of any individual figure. Cite, uh, when you uh, cite the figure, always capitalize the word figure uh, that should be followed by the uh, figure number. Uh, the number the figures sequentially with Arabic numerals. Parts of the figure can be designated as a combination of Arabic and Roman, uh, Roman numerals or even alphabets, for example. Uh, figure 1a, 2a, like that. Uh, in overall, uh, overall, figures should give more understanding and be less complex. Most often for publishing uh, or uh, for high quality printing, uh, if your uh, EPS formats are preferred, uh, in case if it is an online journal, uh, they are going to uh, render the uh, figure online, uh, JPEG or uh, uh, GIF formats are preferred. Uh, PNG and PDF formats are universal, so you can uh, interchange between uh, both uh, both ways. Uh, um, set figure resolution to 300 dpi. 600 dpi is preferred for photographs. Scan can, uh, if you have some uh, scanned uh, data, uh, it should be scanned uh, between 800 to 1200 dpi. Use a similar font to text and make sure uh, the font copyright because uh, even the fonts comes under. Uh, 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 the fonts are protected under copyright law. Uh, usage of uh, non-commercial uh, fonts uh, may require uh, some uh, may require some permission and may at, uh, may arise uh, some issues. Uh, follow the color trends uh, uh, in subsequent graphs. Uh, for example, if you uh, use uh, red color for a sommelier in uh, the graph one, uh, similarly uh, the graph two should also have the same color uh, for the same material. Finally, sometimes we may need to use figures or tables or uh, some other material from previous publication. Unless explicitly declared, all the scientific contents are corporate protected. Once your manuscript has been accepted for publication, the, published, the publisher would ask you to provide a copyright transfer form. It means all the copyright of the text has been transferred to the publisher. After this, uh, even for uh, use your own figures and tables, you have to get proper permission from the publishers. So open access journals like uh, Nature Communications or RS Responses charge you an amount and will publish the manuscript as open or in Creative Commons license. Open means people can freely access the manuscript whereas the CC include many terms uh, that uh, like uh, anyone can use anything 
without any permission in all the cases a proper attribution is required so attribution is something different from the permission but you should aware of one thing i want to mention here is uh, uh, sometimes people download an image from internet and cite it as from google it's like you get some article from google uh, search on the site it like from google you should find the actual source of the image and uh, that should be cited uh, in your manuscript now let us move on to the tools part first i think the require a different tools for writing uh, to graphing and uh, uh, other related work here i summarize few tools which i have either used or tested since science is a very broad area and there were numerous uh, interdisciplinary based software one may not know each and every tool so here i provide a generalized version any software packages are classified under uh, six terms uh, it could be open source or a freeware uh, shareware network license the single user license uh, and software as a service like uh, uh, hosting the app in the cloud so that uh, using a browser you can use that of which open source and uh, freeware is a bit different in open source you can get all the code from uh, um, scratch to the top uh, so that if you want to modify or uh, if you want to implement something uh, you could do it in the open source freeware is something like uh, it's it's code has been closed but uh, the package the package is free to use uh, shareware and uh, network license or like uh, um, getting a uh, license and uh, use it in a closed to circle single user license is like your uh, windows uh, license uh, the only person who got the license uh, can use that software uh, so considering the writing tools uh, most often people are using uh, what you see is what you get uh, type editors uh, uh, these are often termed as uh, office packs which combine word processor sheets and uh, presentation um, you people are aware of that um, uh, mostly you are using microsoft office uh, and of course uh, uh, some cloud based tools uh, like google docs uh, but personally i prefer libre office uh, which is powerful alternative to uh, these two things even though it is not cloud based but some cloud based open source solution like next cloud are available uh, and if you want exactly the feel of uh, word uh, but uh, it should be a free where you should consider uh, only office uh, as well as the um, WPS office even though they are like of uh, certain uh, features as the top versions of this uh, uh, both of them are uh, better alternatives uh, especially i prefer only the top over uh, WPS office uh. but these are uh, uh, the problem with these a uh, uh, kind of editors these uh, they were not suitable for editing big documents like uh, uh, doing your thesis or uh, uh, writing a book chapter or something like that uh. so uh, it is uh, uh, it, these softwares are not uh, good for a uh, version control too so considering version control uh, it involves process of naming and distributing between a series of uh, draft documents uh, which lead to a final upload version so multiple authors can simultaneously working on the same documents uh, and finally uh, based on we, we can combine all those things and uh, produce the final document uh, it offer traceability identifiability identifiability and clarity uh, it reduces the duplication as well as the errors uh, so often text based editors are great for uh, uh, version based control two major languages uh, like uh, latex and markdown can be used for uh, processing uh, the text into the uh, final output for either a subtitling or for uh, view online uh, uh, for a text based processor uh, you often need you, uh, you need a text editor could be a graphical user interface or a, a, it could be cli editor personally i prefer a vs code and a nano on gui for a gui as well as for cli editors of course there are some standalone packages are available like pile latex lamic tech uh, even some online uh, packages like uh, online websites like the uh, orly offer uh, better uh, latex compiling features uh, and uh, type around simple net can be used for uh, markdown related uh, editing and uh, publishing or a post like github or a bit bucket uh, uh, are available for free of cost uh, any number of private repositories can be uh, created uh, in these uh, websites uh, so they are very safe to uh, use so that you can ultimately host your uh, paper into a uh, safe cloud based repository considering graphing 
um, you all are aware of Arjun Pro, I think, and uh, many of you uh, use uh, MS Excel, I think. Uh, uh, and Bitfall Alternative is a uh, uh, scientific data visualization tool which we uh, short term as a side Davis, uh, which is a good one. And if you want some uh, simple and uh, potential uh, graphing package, I could uh, recommend uh, Grace uh, uh, or it may be called as uh, XM Grace uh, in XM window uh, operating system. ASP is originally uh, used for uh, plotting uh, astronomical data, so it is a powerful uh, package and it could be used for uh, uh, nowadays it's, it has been used for ordinary plotting things, so it's very powerful and you could uh, consider them too. Of course, there were uh, some CL editors too, like uh, GNU Plot and KM Plot. I personally use uh, KM, uh, GNU Plot, uh, which is uh, very good and could produce a very high quality figures. Uh, uh, the one thing you should uh, aware of uh, when you prepare the graphs in MS is uh, the line thickness uh, that we termed it as a uh, point size of the line. It reduces when they export the figure as a JPEG or a PNG. So uh, always uh, uh, increase the line size. Uh, uh, then what do you uh, prefer in while viewing the graph? Like if you feel one point is uh, enough for your graph. Uh, just increase it to 1.5 or 1.7 so that uh, when the after the final export uh, it could be exactly same similar to the one you uh, viewed with one pointer one uh, interesting software is uh, xy platter as i mentioned earlier sometimes uh, when you have a very old instrument uh, mostly uh, nmr and ftr instruments are very old and uh, it may be working good still so you supposed to get the data as the printed uh, output uh, uh, or a printed graph so you supposed to uh, scan it and uh, submit to the journal but uh, uh, or always uh, or uh, you can uh, uh, upload this to xy plot and uh, extract the data from the plot it is a, a very interesting and uh, useful one for uh, simulation and uh, analytical uh, calculations uh, matlab and mathematica are well known and well proven solutions uh, but uh, octave and sage map or uh, octave is uh, uh, open source packages and uh, they are very powerful of course uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, they equally uh, worth the top uh, matlab or mathematica of course it is worth to consider maximum and scilab too they are also uh, very good uh, packages with lot of options uh, uh, or always you can go to the programming languages, uh, modern uh, languages like R or uh, Go language have been developed by Google uh, and of course Python. Uh, nowadays uh, R and Python have been widely considered for machine learning and artificial intelligence based problems uh, and of course uh, there is a package called Julia. Uh, many people don't know about it uh, but it's a uh, uh, well known and uh, very good for uh, numerical computation. When you have some uh, queries or doubts, uh, it's always better to check the stack exchange, stack exchange or stack overflow, uh, uh, which have tons and tons of questions and so on. So, uh, there might be a possibility that uh, your question has been already asked by someone, and uh, some uh, somebody may answer to that. Uh, so uh, nowadays, uh, people are looking for uh, interactive supporting documents, and uh, even there is a proposal for. Uh, uh, interactive uh, journal uh, publications uh, in which case it is better to learn ipython and uh, uh, which have been covered by uh, jupyter notebook uh, they of uh, they offer interactive data manipulation and the coding possibilities uh. so consider, uh, for uh, uh, processing images and drawings uh, uh, for images, uh, uh, many of you know of Photoshop, but GIMP is a better alternative. It pro it, it sometimes I feel it, it is much much better, better than Photoshop. Uh, it, it is free and uh, available for all kind of software systems. Uh, for considering uh, drawings, uh, Illustrator and Corel Draw are very professional, but uh, Inkscape is an open source and um, uh, as much as good uh, the top Illustrator uh, uh, even after the. Uh, release of Inkscape one, uh, it is uh, equivalent to the top Illustrator. Uh, TGIF is a uh, uh, very uh, basic and uh, uh, easy to use uh, 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 line drawing software. Uh, sometimes you may need to do some 3D drawings because uh, nowadays uh, 
uh, it's like uh, presenting some uh, exciting images uh, uh, people are sometimes looking to create some 3d images uh, for that there were many uh, softwares like moya and lightwave but these two were uh, uh, very professional and even many animation movies have been uh, created using this one uh, uh, but personally i think uh, blender which is also used uh, can be used to create animation movies uh, uh, for a uh, uh, lower purpose like our uh, uh, drawings we can use uh, a blender but uh, one another important software is uh, Google sketch which have been replicated from publication i think it may be available in google clouds but um, it's a potential software and uh, uh, it's old version uh, may available in public domain so it's uh, it, it's better to search for that one also using ms publisher as well as liver of this draw you could create potential graphics uh, and line drawings uh, you may try that too for uh, considering uh, chemical drawings uh, uh, chem draw and chem sketch are uh, uh, very professional and of which uh, chem sketch is available for uh, available as a freeware for uh, normal usage uh, uh, you couldn't do much with it whereas a chem draw offer advanced futures uh, but it is a paid subscription moment sketches uh, as much as equal to chem sketch it offers uh, good uh, solutions uh, for uh, designing a molecule for visualization uh, both avogadro and uh, capodit are very good for uh, uh, three dimensional visualization pymol can be used for visualizing uh, proteins and uh, bio related things and for crystal related things you could uh, uh, use a uh, mercury software for simulations there were uh, um, uh, hundreds of photos available uh, personally you might aware of uh, caution which is, which is a very well known uh, dft based software uh, i personally suggest to consider orpa which is a, a very good one and uh, it is worth to consider it offers uh, uh, many interesting features uh, one other thing is if you are interested in uh, simulating nonlinear optical properties you could check a uh, dalton package it is a uh, very useful to uh, consider that one uh, if you are limited with computational power you could go to uh, semi empirical calculations for that you can use a uh, mocap software uh, for uh, structure related queries uh, uh, you can always uh, go to a uh, upacker which is well known uh, who are the one providing jcp data another one a free repository is a uh, a crystal open database which is uh, available for free anyone can submit or retrieve data uh, from it for free of cost for protein related things you can check uh, uh, rs rcsb is a pdb data bank uh, finally uh, sorry for considering language tools uh, many uh, text editors offer uh, built in tools uh, uh, but if you need a very sophisticated and uh, uh, online tools uh, uh, you may aware of grammarly uh, most of you may use it as an email plugin uh, apart from that uh, uh, for advanced features you have to pay for that uh, in that scenario a language tools is a, a better option uh, if you don't want to uh, want an uh, individual application you may try slip right it is also good uh, but if you paid and want some professional solution you may consider either white smoke or uh, ginger for plagiarism checking you can always go to or uh, pro writing aid apparator is uh, uh, free i think uh, i uh, i'm not sure whether pro, pro writing aid or apparator uh, uh, some uh, any one of uh, some of one is uh, offering a free solution uh, for plagiarism at a limited level but we found the standard and uh, most of the institutions uh, using that one if you are good with python uh, there are many python related packages available uh, in github uh, repositories you could uh, build your own language related uh, uh, grammar checking and plagiarism checking tool for reference manager uh, most of the people uh, use either mangle or endnote uh, a better and open source alternative is zatura uh, which i personally prefer uh, a good alternative to mangle of course uh, you can always uh, uh, do the things and export a web tag for a uh, uh, rip from that uh, google scholar uh, and so uh, you may have heard that nowadays uh, a citation has been uh, splitted into positive and negative citation if you uh, have a positive citation it means uh, 
uh, the author agrees with your results so the negative citation means the author uh, shows some bad results or uh, disapproving your results uh, uh, so uh, like uh, artificial intelligence based website like site ai uh, show whether uh, a particular article is uh, uh, positively uh, referred or negatively referred uh, you can also consider tab profile or uh, site of each chapter uh, these are all uh, very good and uh, well known uh, reference managers nowadays uh, since most of the people use a mobile as a as their uh, reading device it's always better to have a bookmark and a reader i personally prefer a rent drop and pocket if you read an online article you uh, want to read it later you can use pocket or if you want to extract it uh, um, or bookmark it uh, you can use a rent drop app so independent of device and uh, browser so you can use a single application to uh, collect all your uh, bookmarks and uh, notes So uh, first I wish to uh, differentiate between preprint and a journal article. Preprint is uh, when you have a stunning result, you want to uh, get uh, or uh, you want to disclose the results to the community which is a uh, very great uh, importance or significance. Uh, uh, journal article is uh, peer reviewed, uh, uh, so it's normal thing. Uh, um, yeah, but a preprint is not a journal article. Even if you submit to preprint, uh, uh, after that uh, you have to submit it to a journal. After the peer review only, it has been officially accepted. Uh, most of uh, nowadays, most of the journals accept preprints, and some standard journals are not accepting preprints. It's a uh, uh, depends on you and uh, your uh, choice of uh, um, journal. So, uh, considering preprints, archive and zero are well known. Archive is the standard. Uh, 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 server for uh, physics and Zenodo is uh, CERN based, uh, but you could uh, host all kind of uh, papers here. Some uh, country based uh, servers also are available, like uh, China Xu or INA Xu, mm, Bio Xu, Engineering Xu, or uh, uh, subject based. A uh, few important other uh, uh, servers are OS of preprints as well as uh, preprints.org. When you wish to uh, find a journal or, or a potential journal for your uh, um, publication, uh, most of the publishers uh, or uh, journal uh, providers uh, have their own uh, journal selecting software uh, like uh, Elsevier has its uh, own journal finder and uh, Springer has its own uh, like that. Uh, but there are some third party solutions like uh, Edans and Cofactor are available. I suggest you to consider Cofactor. So in summary, uh, here's the take home message. Uh, just always falls to the uh, ground rules or follow the uh, ethical uh, aspects of the research and decide when and uh, uh, what to publish. Uh, be sure your work is uh, uh, ethical and you follow all standard guidelines. Publish when you feel the work is complete, uh, not publish for credits alone. One better way is uh, internal uh, circulation among peers or seniors uh, uh, and for all their comments. Uh, make sure proper language and formatting rules are applied to your manuscript. Again, by uh, the better way is ask a friend or a senior colleague for comments. If possible, you can contact the language department experts. Uh, Regarding tools, I would suggest you to consider open source. After all, science is doing uh, 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 mostly non-profit usage of tools uh, might also be. Modern open source tools are equivalent and in some cases much better than the commercial tools. So, take Jim or Inkscape. Uh, it, I personally feel they are much better than Photoshop or Illustrator, but it's up to you. Uh, people often go for pro version due to the reason they are available as pirated version. This might also create some issue in future. More and more softwares are network oriented. It is easy to detect a pirated copy. Then you are supposed to buy one or have to adopt an open source software which include a learning curve. But it's all up to you. Uh, the soldier chooses uh, his own weapon. So it's up to you. Uh, these are the some selected reads. And I personally recommend you to consider the fourth and the style manuals which are from American Institute of Physics as well as from the American Chemical Society uh, so it's better to um, go to these things so uh, like as I mentioned uh, uh, in science nothing is possible 
uh, without uh, peers or uh, uh, friends uh, or even colleagues. I wish to acknowledge some of the friends and colleagues uh, who greatly contributed to this talk. I uh, wish to express my sincere gratitude and thanks to uh, Dr. Tikhan Desigran, Assistant Professor uh, of uh, Physics uh, in ISR Philippi. He is my PA2. Uh, he, uh, uh, he corrected the draft and uh, uh, improved the content. And I express my sincere thanks to Dr. K. Suresh for content suggestions and perspectives. He offered different perspectives and uh, suggested few softwares to include. And I thank uh, Dr. Jody Murugan for uh, uh, the encouragement and delivering ideas. Uh, he, uh, 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 he shared a lot of ideas to how to deliver a, a webinar uh, like that. And I thank Dr. Shikha Kumari for overall review. Uh, she reviewed the things and offered uh, some of her thoughts. Finally, I thank uh, Dr. E, uh, V. Ishwara Murthy from Karpagam Institute. Uh, he coordinated this talk and uh, uh, he managed the content uh, to suit the audience who supposed to attend this um, uh, webinar. So, thank you all.